Let's hear it once again for the very own Mr. Humphrey. Hello. Hello, good afternoon, everybody. How are you? Good, good, good. Um, actually, this morning I was here for, uh, for the benefit of uh, our bloggers from India. Okay. Can I see a raise of hand all the way from India, our bloggers? All right. I think some of you were not here this morning. Okay. Uh, you came a little bit late. Uh, I think some of you uh, heard of my presentation okay, this morning and uh, if you don't mind, to some of those who was, in, uh, who was here this morning, I would like to show a little bit more uh, slides which I have uh, showed you this morning, but just for the benefit of our uh, uh, bloggers from India and uh, so that they know some of the information that we have in Sabah. Okay? I'm going to show a little bit more which is repetitive in uh, my presentation this morning, but more towards the products so that they understand what's to be offered in Sabah as a holiday destination. Okay. Can add the. Yeah. Okay. Um, just a background on Sabah Tourism Board. Uh, as I mentioned this morning, we are under the Ministry of Tourism, um, and we have the Sabah Museum, the Wildlife Department, and Environment, Sabah Parks, Cultural Board, and we Sabah Tourism Board. We are actually the marketing arm for the state of Sabah. Okay. Um, uh, we were known as Sabah Tourism Promotion Corporation. Today we are called Sabah Tourism Board. And our tourist arrival, uh, just, to inf uh, just to give you a highlight on, uh, to our uh, to bloggers from India, our arrivals came up to about 3.879 uh, million uh, last year. Okay, uh, this overall, and uh, this is brought up to domestic and international arrivals. Uh, domestic is around two-thirds and uh, international is one-third of the arrivals and our target for this year is four million in total and these are the market segment that we're going into all right and these are the segment of the market that we are actually focusing uh, for Saba as a holiday destination and air connectivity okay for those of you who are flying from India you can always come through uh, Kuala Lumpur or you can always come through Singapore or even Hong Kong if you want. Okay, and um, we have 16 airlines, international airlines that flies into Sabah from 23 international cities abroad, and they, this is where they fly in. And the flight frequency for international flight into Sabah is around 226 flights per week. Okay, international flights per week and. Uh, Domestically, if you can see here, is 424 domestic flight that flies into Kota Kinabalu. So the number of frequency that you have between Kuala Lumpur and Sabah, Penang and uh, into Sabah and Sarawak into Sabah, these are the flight frequency of 424 flights per week. Okay, and these are the airlines and the cities they are coming in from from the various cities in China. We have 12 cities in China that flies direct into Kota Kinabalu. And of course, we have Philippines, Tokyo, and Singapore. Uh, the next biggest one would be Korea with 37 flights per week. Uh, even Singapore is flying into Kota Kinabalu around 21 flights a week, and with a totality of 206 flights per week into Sabah today as per March 2019. Uh, hotel industry, okay, um, as far as the hotels are concerned, we are growing the number of hotels every year now, okay, and the numbers have gone to about 600 over, that's the latest statistic that we have of 2016, and these are the number of hotels that we have in Kota Kinabalu today, with a five star around 12 hotels, it gives us about uh, 3,000 over rooms, ranging from five star to uh, no rating, uh, we have around 27,000 rooms uh, in totality, okay? And uh, I 
as you can see on the right hand side, new hotels. Hilton is up already, okay? Uh, Ibis is also up, uh, Bokyo is also up, uh, Borneo Eagle, uh, yes, that one is up as well. And there are also other hotels coming up, okay? And um, uh, these, we need more rooms basically in Sabah. And among the resorts that we have is actually Manukan Island, which is around 15 minutes on a boat ride, okay? That's very near from town. Uh, this is Sutra Harbour Resort, okay? And this is right in town uh, with a 27-hole with a golf course and the only golf course that plays night golfing. And we have Shangri-La Tanjung Aro Resort, okay? This is also very near from the airport, which gives you about 492 rooms. And we have Shangri-La Rasare Resort, which where you are now, okay? And this is where, uh, on the beachfront, uh, the first uh, Indian wedding that we had, they even built a uh, concert stage uh, at the beachfront, okay? And we have uh, also, this is also from Shangri-La, and it's actually a walk-up uh, nature trail uh, near here. It's about 30 minutes walk up, and this is the view you will get with breakfast in Shangri-La Rasaria Resort. And this is also Nexus Resort Karambunai, okay? And uh, this is also a golf course with a resort, and it's actually 30 minutes from city into Nexus Resort Karambunai, and uh, with, on the same route, a little bit further, another 15 minutes is actually uh, Rasaria. This is where it is. And we have Le Meridian, right in town, with 309 rooms. Uh, Guyana Eco Resort, 20 minutes from on, on a boat ride. Uh, we have Gaia, a YTL Gaia Island Resort, as 20 minutes from the uh, from the city on a boat ride. Bunga Raya Resort, 25 minutes uh, on a boat ride. Uh, Kuda Riviera is right at a at a peak, and uh, these are also individual bungalows uh, which are rented out, and it looks like this, one of them, okay. Uh, Kokol Heaven, uh, not too far from the city as well, this is the view that it gives you on a sunset. Marriott Hotel, which is open, uh, and with 322 rooms. Uh, Dokkin, uh, this actually um, uh, uh, budget accommodation, but it's very nicely designed. And uh, uh, if you didn't know that, uh, one of the beds there is actually a double deck, but it's a queen size double bed, okay? And uh, which is actually uh, not unique, which we don't see. And normally it's only a single occupancy, but this is a queen size uh, double deck uh, accommodation. Uh, we, have, we have also capsule accommodation in Kota Kinabalu today, okay? Sea view capsule accommodation at uh, Wawasan uh, building, which is right in town, okay? It's coming up and it's getting very popular. Uh, Dragon Inn Semporna. Semporna, if, for those of you who don't know this place, Semporna, uh, Semporna is actually a beautiful diving site area. And we are ranked uh, top three diving sites in the world today, all right? Uh, upcoming hotels, uh, Barrett is already open. Uh, Sabah International Convention Center here. Uh, we have, uh, we'll have around 2,000 over rooms that's coming up, okay? Uh, with Airbnb 700 units in the same area, and this is right in town, uh, Pacific City. And we have ITCC, which is uh, not far from here. And the one opposite Hilton, right in town, is uh, actually Holiday Inn Hotel that's coming up and at the airport, which is very near to the airport, and Alila Resort, which is just next door here, all right? And Crown Hotel is right in town as well. So with this, with the insufficient number of rooms, we are expecting around 4,867 rooms in Kota Kinabalu, Sabah, okay? And, um, okay, the convention center is right in town, okay? Um, uh, this convention itself is expected to uh, complete by uh, next year. And uh, it's gonna, uh, is the capacity is 5,000, uh, 5,000 standing. And if it is, uh, sorry, uh, with, uh, and then if it is sitting arrangement is 4,000, okay? 
And next to it is the Kota Kinabalu Convention Center, which is not the convention center itself, but it's a shopping mall with five hotels, okay? Next to it is Jessatin Key. That one is one shopping mall, one hotel, and two blocks of Airbnb, 700 units, okay? Uh, that's, this is gonna be it's right in town, guys, okay? For the benefit of our guests. And tourism products, what to do, okay? These are the content that you could actually experience later on if you do come back. Um, in Sabah, unfortunately, those two days that you have is a little bit short, but there's more to see, a reason to come back next time. Um, we are basically promoting unforgettable experiences, okay? This is on the East Coast, where our top diving sites are in Semporna. And the eighth key tourism product that we have is Mount Kinabalu. Uh, nature and wildlife, adventure activities, ethnic cultural experience, diving and snorkeling, island and beaches, golfing, and mice, meeting, incentive conference, and events. Okay? Uh, these are the key things that we're selling in Sabah and promoting them. And as far as adventure activities are concerned, we have Mount Kinabalu, as I mentioned to you earlier. Okay, and it's a World Heritage Site today. Um, and this is an annual event called Climaton, it, where it's held uh, every year with a capacity of uh, 140 packs per day, okay? And the height of the mountain is 4,095 meters. Quick question, our friends from India, uh, how do you enjoy uh, uh, jungle trekking or mountain climbing? Do you? Can I see a show of hands? Okay, great, fantastic. When it comes to adventure, you enjoy adventure activities? Okay, great. What about, um, if, do you like water activity? Who likes water activity? Our friends from India. Okay. Uh, on, on land activity? Okay, who doesn't like the water? Oh, there are a few of you, okay. All right, okay. Um, are you okay with uh, this mountain climb in Mount Kinabalu? Okay, why? Okay, this is an experience itself at Mount Kinabalu, okay. And white water rafting, uh, this is grade one to two, all right. Um, there's also the Padas River rafting, grade three to four, uh, more exciting. Uh, we also have surfing at Atkurat, the tip of Borneo. Uh, zip line in Kota Kinabalu city itself in the islands is around 15 to 20 minutes. Okay, this will be a great content for you, right? This is another uh, zip line, which is uh, about an hour from here, and uh, which, with Mount Kinabalu as a background. Golfing, okay. Um, this is actually Pulau Tiga, one of the islands in which you, you, you'll experience uh, uh, diving into the volcano mud, okay and also uh, ATV here, and, uh, um, and experiencing the beautiful uh, area in Polumpung Malangkap for the view of the sky. Trail running, can I know who are very keen in trail running events? Okay, I know a lot of uh, Indian guests. We have also events almost every month, or even twice, to three times a month events coming up. And uh, this is the main, one of the main events. Uh, it goes to 100 kilometers in distance. Uh, there are also 50 kilometer in distance and a category of 25 kilometer distance, okay? And uh, this year alone, there was about 2,000 packs uh, that actually participated in this event. Wildlife and nature, okay? At Kinematangan River, Sukau River Cruise, um, and uh, you can also cite uh, the proboscis monkey on the river cruise, okay? This is how you would experience uh, 
getting close to the proboscis bunkies. Okay, the pygmy elephant, the smallest pygmy elephant in the world, in which we have it in Sabah today. And the Sepilok Orang Utan Rehab Center, it is the largest rehab center in the world, okay? And uh, this base in Sandakan area is a flight that's about uh, 40 minutes from Kota Kinabalu, in which you need to overnight uh, in Sandakan itself and to experience and see uh, the orangutans, okay? The platform itself is there, and all these uh, orangutan will The feeding time is at 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock in the afternoon. In the morning, 10 and 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, they will automatically come, and everybody will experience them coming in, being fed at the platform. Okay? Okay, the Rafflesia flower, flower. It is the largest flower in the world. Um, it is not easily seen, but um, they are. But what happens is, Sabah Tourism Board is a center in which we receive uh, information about the Rafflesia, and it actually takes nine months to bloom, and it only lasts one week to ten days. Okay. Uh, this is also uh, in Borneo Rainforest Lodge in Lahadatu area, which you have to fly across, and this is how you'll experience in Borneo Rainforest Lodge itself. Uh, the canopy walkway, uh, this is also a 300-meter uh, canopy walkway in, uh, at the resort itself, okay? And you also get the experience, um, your lunch being served on the, uh, in the river itself, okay? Professionally done and experienced. Uh, this is what the accommodation looks like, okay? And... Uh, if you need it to be arranged, you can have breakfast uh, served at that platform. And if you're very lucky, you will see elephant passing by. Okay. Now, this particular area in which uh, on the last day when we went there, it was about, uh, we arrived at, the, at this platform itself. It's actually a scientist uh, tower in which uh, we went there at about 5.30 in the morning for a sunrise this is what it looks like on the sunrise. It's above the clouds, okay? And we will serve breakfast at the, at the tower itself. Diving, snorkeling. Divers, do I see divers from India? Anybody? Divers, okay. Divers, all right. Okay, now this is diving and snorkeling, which is uh, near uh, uh, the city itself, 15 to 20 minutes on a boat ride. Uh, Sapi Island again, uh, this is one of the islands very nearby the city, 15 minutes on a boat ride. And the zip line, okay, the zip line that you saw earlier is actually from this island to that island, okay? Okay, um, this diving site and this is the Mabul Island. And as far as accommodation is concerned, there are various kind of accommodation ranging from basic accommodation to five-star resort accommodation. The, the oil rig that you see at the top there, okay, that one there is an oil rig. Uh, uh, they also have a very good accommodation there. And if you want to have meetings, they also have meeting rooms as well. Kapalai is another area uh, for divers. Buhei Dulang, this is another area in which um, many people would love to go. And we have a lot of tourists. This is in Semporna area. Uh, and uh, the flight is basically from here into Tawau, which is around 40 minutes. And it's a, it's, a car, it's a car ride of one hour into Semporna town and a boat ride to any of the islands around. It ranges between 30 minutes to 40 minutes, depending on which island you can go. And um, we have tourists that goes up to those hills and they will just juggle, they will just track up the hill with a view of this area, okay? It's a beautiful place to go into, okay? And uh, as far as Separat Island is concerned, this is the, we, are, we were rated as the top three diving site in the world, and this is Separat Island. As you can see, there are accommodation at the moment, uh, sorry, there are accommodation before. It, actually, it has actually been removed, okay, for conservation reasons, because we want to protect this island itself, okay? And uh, if you, if, you, if you're a diver, the shape of the island is actually a shape of a mushroom. If you go to the edge, you can see the difference. It's black and blue, 
okay? So, um, so if you just go in there and experience the diving that you would see, or this aerial view of that place, and you will experience green turtle at the Sipadan Island itself, and, uh, and also the Barracuda Point uh, with all the fishes, okay? And you will experience this as well. Um, for, if you don't dive, you can just snorkel, okay? Food-wise, okay, the Indian market is also a challenge to us, okay? But we are very, very rich in seafood, okay? These are our local food that we have in Sabah. People, we have over 30 ethnic groups, and you will see them performing this evening. Shopping mall, this is our latest shopping mall that we have. Uh, this was uh, built, in, uh, was opened in 2015, and it's called Imago Shopping Mall, right in town. Okay, the new emerging market, uh, some of our uh, friends already heard this, but for the benefit of our Indian guests, uh, last year we had 5,606 packs that came into Sabah from India, and this was our uh, first Indian wedding that was held. And uh, in 2014, um, they brought in 750 packs. Um, they were even considering to, we also arranged a few things with them. Uh, uh, they've also uh, brought in a lot of celebrities into Sabah. With the spread through word of mouth, we had another six Indian wedding in Sabah. And we just did one Indian wedding this year in the same hotel in Shangri-La Rasaria Resort. And all these um, weddings that was done in Kota Kinabalu itself, all right? Um, we see, we want more weddings in Sabah. Uh, they even had performers from all over the place. Um, and uh, it's not a very clear picture, but this was in out, uh, outside in front, where it was on the beach front, where they, they, they built a concert stage. And this was the place that uh, they've done and designed for their guests, okay? It's not a very clear picture. I didn't get a quite good picture on that day, but this is what happened that day, and they really had a good time, okay? Okay, um, uh, Borneo Sanakan Tours, one of the tour agents has reported to me, uh, also Indians now are doing uh, helicopter charters in Sanakan and Tawal for nature uh, helicopter ride. Uh, there are also divers that's coming in now, uh, and they're also doing their own bookings. Uh, and we have this uh, thank you to Sabati. They hosted uh, the bloggers from India. They came in last year and uh, they promoted us as well. And thank you, Sabati, for hosting them. And we also brought celebrity chef in Shangri La Rosaria Resort. Uh, they did a cooking program as well in Rosaria. And we went to a Thailand, uh, 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 Hua Hin in Thailand. Uh, in 2018, and we met up with Baduri Dixit as well. Uh, we wanted to bring them across to Kota Kinabalu, but unfortunately they didn't come, but we met up with Baduri Dixit uh, in, uh, in Hua Hin, Thailand. And, sorry, it's not about Okay, among the tourism product that we have, we also have rural tourism, in which you experience uh, rural tourism and also uh, with the villagers. This, they're also gong making uh, village area as well. Okay. And a view of Mount Kinabalu from Kutabulud area. Okay. Um, that's all my presentation for, uh, for Saba. And it's very easy to remember our phone, our phone number is 21, 21, 21. And we open 365 days a year. Okay. So if you have, if you have any problems, questions of any kind, okay. Call that number, okay? And uh, with that, uh, I would like to thank all the bloggers from India for coming to Sabah. Um, it's totally a privilege for us to take care of you. And uh, Travel Earth has informed me that uh, they will look at the results of the posting that has been done. Thank you once again, Humphrey. Thank you so much. Um, we're just going to quickly check if there are any questions from the audience. 
I believe there's a question right across. Can we have lights on the audience as well? There's a question right across. Yeah. I'm going to request you, sir, to also please introduce yourself. Hi. My name is Vijay. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm a travel blogger from Bangalore. Okay. So I blog along with my wife, Sandy. Uh, and our blog site name is Voyager. Uh, my question uh, is a little a longish one. Uh, so I hope uh, you listen yeah. to it patiently. If you don't mind, can you speak a little bit louder for me, please? Yeah. So my question is a bit longish one. OK. Uh, so first of all, uh, whatever glimpses of Sama that we've seen in the two days, and also what you showed us in the presentation. Uh, Sama has emerged as a very pristine and untouched place. Yep. Now, these are the places that people want to go. Correct. Like places where not many people go, people want to go. Um, but that itself uh, is a catch-22 situation. For example, uh, I see that you're looking at 4 million uh, arrivals, tourist mm -hmm. arrivals in 2019. Yep. Uh, I am sure it will be much more. Uh, especially because of all the digital influencers over here. Yep. So it may become 8 million, 10 million. Uh, now my question is, uh, there's always a, a balance to be maintained between the tourist arrivals and the conservation of the environment. Mm -hmm. Okay, so everyone knows uh, what is happening in places like Mount Everest. Okay, so my very simple question is, do we have checks and balances in place because you're still starting, I mean, the arrivals are less. So it is easy to put uh, checks and balances in the system yep. so that over tourism does not take its toll and Saba remains as pure, as pristine as ever. Oh, so can you repeat that last part again? Yeah, I, I just want to know whether uh, Saba, the government and the authorities mm -hmm. uh, have any checks and balances or they have any plan to ensure that the environment is still sustained and uh, irrespective of the number of tourists coming okay, in, okay. it is preserved. All right, all right. Okay, now um, with uh, so many flights that's coming in and uh, with a lot of tourists also slowly increasing in numbers, um, if you, actually, if you can see uh, earlier, our arrival figures is basically around 3.89 million. Now, the numbers of increase is not a big jump, okay? Uh, we also need to ensure the maintenance of various places, and we, we cannot just accept too many people arriving at the same time. Now, um, that's, that is why various places like Mount Kinabalu uh, and also uh, Sipadan, the, the island itself for the dive, we only limit to around 140 uh, climbers and divers per day. So that is one of our uh, check balances and to ensure that not people overcrowd those places because we, we, want them, one, we want the island itself and the mountain to sustain, okay? And it is for conservation reasons that is why we do a limit in that. So this will also apply uh, into, the isle, into the nearby islands from the uh, KK City Center, uh, those islands will also have a restriction number which, in which we want to maintain it to a certain uh, numbers in one day. So as of that, uh, with Mount Kinabalu and Sipadan uh, Dive uh, Island itself, we are also controlling, we have controls on those on the numbers of people going into the island and also to climb in a day. So those are the kinds of uh, things that we actually ensure um, that is being done, okay? That's a good start for the, for the moment, yeah. Unlike um, Mount Fuji, okay? Mount Fuji, I heard, is about a few thousand climbers. It's huge numbers, and when they go up there, they will sleep like sardines, you know? Um, uh, it may look very beautiful from a distance, but from what I was told, there are a lot of rubbish there as well, which um, they're trying to, to manage uh, for Mount Fuji. But on our side, for, for, the, con for the reasons of conservation, and long-term tourism, uh, we do try to control it from there. All right? All right, any more Anybody questions? Else? Anyone else? All right, then. All right. Well, on that note, thank you once thank again, you very then. very much, yeah. So uh, thank you so much, and uh, hope that our guests from India uh,
we'll come back and uh, uh, I think Travel Earth will get in touch with you and uh, they will see how are the reports like for, for all the posting and response. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming to Kota Kinabalu and uh, we really appreciate you coming here. Uh, I know most of you is first time here as well. Uh, if there's anything that you want, want to uh, sit down and discuss, you can always talk to Travel Earth or the tour agent that was handling you. Thank you very much and have a good day. Thank you. Thank you once again, Andre. Thank you so much. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, what's up next in the agenda? Let me quickly run it through you. Uh, while we're going to be taking a 45-minute lunch break, uh, this is the time when I'm going to be urging all of you to also participate in the Malaysia Tourism Photo uh, Contest uh, because the contest closes at 2 p.m. So I'm going to request all of you to go ahead and post your pictures either on Insta Story or Instagram uh, or on Facebook as well. But while you do that, please do not forget to hashtag Visit Malaysia 2020 hashtag VM2020, and hashtag Malaysia Truly Asia. In case you're planning to post these pictures on Facebook, you can also tag uh, uh, TYH Borneo Tours uh, on uh, uh, Facebook, uh, as well as on Instagram. That is TYH Borneo Tours, besides these hashtags. So in case any queries, please do get in touch with us. But please utilize this lunch break to have your lunch, and also get your pictures uh, to be a part of the Malaysia Tourism Photo Contest this evening uh, at Earth East 2019, we're going to be announcing the winner. The winner walks away with a grand prize of a three nights, two days stay in Sabah. So all that and more we're going to share with you. As of now, let's all head out for lunch and uh, see you all exactly in 45 minutes. And uh, enjoy your lunch. See you soon.